Okay, so today I actually want to talk about Google My Business. Um, we have a reschedule from one of our classes uh, right before boot camp where internet went down, and I apologize for that, but I'm going to do a makeup class on that. Uh, but today I want to talk about Google My Business. And the reason that I want to talk about this, especially with my marketing students, I'm actually going to put this on Notary Stars for everybody, uh, not just marketing students, because I think it's such a simple component of marketing. Uh, that is uh, really important uh, for all notaries to know. Um, and I see courses out there for $150 on how to maximize your Google business. And I, I'm sorry, but I think that's bullshit. Um, and I'm putting myself on camera saying that because you, I charge an additional $24.95 a month for my marketing course and give you so much more. You can spend a whole year with me and it's literally just a blip on the radar. Um, does it bring you in business? Yes. Is there a way to maximize it? Absolutely. Is it complicated? No, you just follow the tabs. And today I want to set up a Google business uh, for you right in front of you um, just to show you how easy it could be. Now, if we're not able to get it verified uh, through traditional methods today, that's OK. We'll hop over to mine and we'll take you through the tabs. Uh, but I really don't want any of our students having to pay one hundred fifty dollars for maximizing something that is really there's nothing to be maximized. You either have a Google My Business listing, you either fill out the tabs or you don't. Uh, so with that said, is there anybody on this call that does not have a Google My Business listing? Ms. Terry, you're the first one to raise your hand. Would you like a Google Business listing today? All right, so we will yeah. give you a Google Business listing and Ms. Carol, I see you raised your hand as well, but Ms. Terry was first. So we're gonna use her as the example for today. And then we will, uh, you'll be able to go back and do this uh, yourself. So I'm going to start out by sharing my screen here. All right. And I just want to make sure you guys can see the screen that it looks like the Zoom intro screen. Okay, perfect. So in order to get to Google My Business, the best way to do that is just go to Google and type in Google Business Listing. And you're going to see a whole list of ads and things like that here you're going to actually go to google business profile get listed on google okay you're going to have a screen like this that says hey you know we want to sign up uh i'm going to actually go to sign in because i actually already have an account i'm going to do it under my account and then transfer it over to miss terry i'm going to close that out so i have a notary stars listing here um, and I'm going to actually do this under Ronnie because I believe that's where I do all of the, the listings. Now, you can see that there are some that are verified, not verified, and that's okay. Uh, if you are one of my marketing students that are unverified, that, then that means that you've changed something on your listing and we have to go through the verification process again. But you can see I have other notary companies on here uh, that were verified, and they do fall in and out of verification. So you do need to check on your verif verification statuses from time to time. We're going to go in here and I'm going to add a business and add a single business. And then Miss Terry, what is the name of your business? Are you operating just as Terry Freeman Notary Public or you do you have a business name? I do have a DBA. It is A and T Notary Solutions. However, I know that you recommended it just to be Terry Freeman Notary Public. So we'll go with that. Because you're working with the general public, I do think that it's best to just operate by your name. Okay. Uh, so we'll type it in. Uh, we'll do Terry Freeman. All right. And then what we're going to do is put you in a business category. The only category that you can be in on Google Business as a notary is notary public. Do not try to add yourself in legal services and all of those things because you're not an attorney. You can only be a notary public and people are only going to search for you as a notary public. They don't know that you can work with legal documents. They just know they did a document notarized. So you just want to put in notary public and you won't be able to enter in anything that's not part of their um, their canon of job titles out there. So the next thing that we're doing is going to go start building your your business profile. Do you want to add a location that customers uh, can visit like a store or an office. Now you do not allow people to come to your home for notarizations, correct? Correct. So you are going to choose no. I do not want to add a location. I do not want people to see my address. 
Now, where do you serve your customers? Now, this is actually part of one of the important points and anybody that is teaching a class on this is probably gonna go over this or at least I hope they do. Where is your home zip code, Miss Terry? When you say home, you mean like my residence, correct? What zip code do you physically reside in? 77088. Okay. Houston, Texas. So that is located in the city of Houston. Yes. So you want to start with your home zip code, then you want to go to the city level, and then you service the entire county, correct? Correct. Which is? Harris County. So now we've got the service area for my zip code, my city, and my county. So that's going to put you into those areas. Now we're going to maximize how many of these can we actually get in there. So what is the zip code next door to you? Is it 77087? Okay, let me pull up a zip code map because Houston is large. Um, I know there's a 77091. And that's really close to you, correct? Yes. Okay, let's take out this map here. Let's see if we can actually see it on the map there. So you got 77091, that's really great. So I see 77037 is next door to you. Would you like that zip code? Yes. So we have 77037. And then what's on top of you there is 77038. Would you like that? Yes. Okay. Next zip code around you is 77086. It touches your zip code. Would you like that? Yes. Okay. And 77040. Yes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be running out soon. So what we want to do is zoom out on this map. I got nine one, I got four zero. So we've got all the zip codes touching except for I think seven to seven oh three seven. Did we get that? Yes, we got that. Did we get seven seven oh seven six? No. Okay, so we've got all those zip codes touching. Now what I want to ask you is is there a subsidy name? Like I live in Phoenix, but Arcadia is like part of Phoenix. Is there a subsidy name that People talk about like Hardy Heights or Hudson. Is there something that people talk about a lot? Like they, they, like it really resonates. Um, the Woodlands Spring, Spring. Woodland or Woodlands? With an S. I don't get the Woodlands no, no. Spring. Okay, see it there on top, it popped up, the first okay. thing on top, yes. And then spring. Springs? Yes, S-P-R-I-N-G, just a no S. There it is on top. There we go, we got spring, Texas. Anything else you can think of? Um, Katie. I wouldn't be surprised if that wasn't the first one that popped up if I typed it right. That's a pretty popular. Anything else? We want to go until they tell us you can't go anymore. Ooh, okay. Um, Is Hardy Heights uh, any of that? Um, no, Atasca Cedar. Let's see. What was that called? Let me try to type in Atasca Cedar. A T C A S. Back up. No, I thought it popped up. Let's see. A T A S C O C I. There we go. That's it. Yes. Um, Galveston.
that's it, yes. Um, I see Deer Park, Conroe, Brasport, Beaumont, Bay Area. League City. What's that? League, L-E-A-G-U-E. -E. That's it, League City. Um, Baytown. That's it up top. Okay, let's see. I guess we can say Deer Park. Oh, I think I put in Deer Park, New York there. Let's put in Deer Park, Texas. Tomball. Spell that. T-O-M-B-A-L-L. -L. Is Beaumont one? No, that's too far. Um, Sugar Land. Okay. Pearland. Did I spell that wrong? Pearland, P-E-A-R-L-A-N, there it is. There we go. Um, I'm gonna say Shenandoah. S H E N A N. There it is. No, that's Virginia, Texas. Okay. We've reached our maximum anyway. It's not going to let us go anymore. Okay. So 20 locations. So, what I've done with this is I've actually put in all the counties that are touching, or excuse me, all the zip codes. I listed myself first in my home zip code or Miss Terry in her home zip code, then at her city level, then at her county level. Then we went back in and added all the sub city names. And most of you do have sub city names uh, that we use like Phoenix, for instance, Phoenix Glendale, Phoenix Arcadia, Phoenix Scottsdale, any city that's touching your city. We have Encanto Village, which you guys may not know, but we hear about it. Um, we have Central City um, on the map. Those are areas that are people physically residing in and Google's gonna connect you with the closest available customers. So. You really want to hyper focus on the zip codes around your zip code start with your home zip code then go to your city level your county level on google google uh on google and then do all the zip codes touching your zip code then you want to use those sub city names around you that are touching you okay and don't don't go too far out doing it at the state level not going to help you they're not going to connect you with somebody across the state all right next Thing that we're coming to on here is add a contact info. Um, what is your phone number, Miss Terry? If you don't mind it being on the internet, if not, you can put it in the chat. Let's see. I'll just give it to you. 832-731-8072. Okay. And then there's a URL website. Uh, do you have a website currently? No. Okay, that's perfectly fine. We're just gonna click the box that says, I do not have a website. Just gonna repeat that number, 832-731-8072. Yes. All right, so we're gonna click next. And it's generating, generating, generating. All right, so we're gonna uh, verify your mailing address. Now this will not appear on the internet, but you may want to type that into the chat. Uh, if you don't want that to appear on the, it's going to appear on the screen anyway, if that, that's okay with you. I can actually unshare it. So if you want to put it in the chat, we can unshare it for just a moment to. Okay. Hold on one second. Cause it's a long mailing address. Hold on. It's okay. I'll just slide this over to another screen so that it's private while we verify that address. And it's a P.O. box, that's okay? Nope, you have to use your home street address. You cannot use a P.O. box. Um, they will probably, they may want to verify your listing through a uh, mail card and they will not use P.O. boxes. So you have to use your street address, but it will not appear online. Okay, so you say it's best for me just to tell you or put it in the chat? 
Uh, you can put it in the chat since it's your home address. Okay. I've got everything moved over for just a moment. For those of you watching the replay or here, we're learning a lot about Houston right now. We can see all the areas through the Houston uh, area with that map up there, but we will get this slid back over in just a moment. And while she's typing that in, I'll tell you what screen I'm on again. I am on this screen here where you would put in your address. And we've already told it at the very beginning, we're not going to do that. And I see that address coming up, so I'm gonna type it in. And I see that zip code matches, and I'm gonna go ahead and click next for that address. All right, now here's something new that Google has been doing, and even since I made my last video, is it wants to verify the listing, okay? Ms. Terry, do you have your cell phone with you? I do. All right, in order to fully manage and represent this business on Google, you will need to confirm that it's you. Select how you like to get a verification. They're going to send you a code, uh, by text to your phone number and I want you to type that number in now it doesn't matter if viewers see this or not because it's a one time verification code. So you can just tell it to me or text it to me, however you prefer, but no one will ever be able to use it again, not even you. Okay, three, four, seven, five, seven, one. Okay, so we're going to click on verify. Code was accepted and now it's going to take you straight out of Google. Uh, straight into adding more things. Sometimes it takes you out for a moment, but this one didn't. If it takes you out, you just need to re-log back in. So now we're gonna go through and I'm gonna suggest to you to only add things you can really do. So we know that you can do acknowledgements. We know you can do adoption. We know you can do affidavits and oath notarizations. Uh, do you do apostills? Um, I have not done one yet. No. Okay. If you're not comfortable with them, do not draw customers in for them because that could create a bad review. So you can do auto purchase notarizations. Uh, can you do certified, certified copy services in, in Texas? Yes. Certified copy services, child custody documents, deed notarization, contract notarization. Uh, do, can you notarize vital, vital records like birth certificates, um, no. degrees? Okay, some states you can, some states you not. You can do demand mm -hmm. payment letters, divorce documentation. Uh, you are an electronic notary. Um, I know that from just knowing you. Document authenticity certification. That one I would leave off because that may include vital records, general notarization, general notary document preparation. In Texas, are you allowed to prepare documents? Most states you are not, and you usually have no. to have a certification. So we'll leave that off. Internal, uh, international document notarization I would leave that off as well because you don't speak several languages and that's usually an apostille so we'll leave that off until you are ready for that juret notary acknowledgments legal service notarization loan notarization notary legal services passport certification that is a vital record so I want to leave that off for now notary signing services you are not a signing service uh, power of attorney document notarization yes Property and escrow documents, definitely. Property registration notarization, shipping documents notarization, solicitor services. You do not do translation services. And can you do wills and trust in Texas? Yes. Okay. Can you do I9 verifications in Texas? Yes. See if it takes it. All right, next. Now we're gonna add in your business hours. Now I recommend you, this is how I always did Google My Business. I see a lot of notaries putting up, you know, I open at 6 a.m., but unless you're actually ready to pick up the phone at 6 a.m., I'm gonna tell you to set your business hours for when you know every day you are there to pick up the phone. So are you open on Sundays, Miss Terry? Yes. And what hours are you available on, on the Sundays? I'll say 6, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. And you, you literally are up at six o'clock in the morning every Sunday to, to answer that phone? Yes. Okay. 
Mondays, what would be your hours? Same thing? Same thing, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Is that going to be every day of the yes. week? Yes, every Even day. Saturdays? Yes. Okay. I have no problem with you saying that, but I will tell you guys what I normally do on Google Business, and Ms. Terry, you can backpedal if you want to. I usually set my business hours uh, to be an hour before I will stop taking appointments. So that way, if they call me, because it's going to show your listing up until 10 p.m., um, I usually won't take it. Like if I stop at nine, then I set it for eight. That way, if anybody calls me, I can still service them within the hour. Um, so that means that somebody could call you for an appointment at 10 p.m. Okay, you so let me back that up. Okay. <laughs> saying that okay let's go um 8 a.m to 8 p.m okay that sounds more reasonable and i i wasn't trying to get you to change but i want you guys to know that i have received in the past bad reviews for not being available during the hours mm -hmm. and i don't teach you these things for you know the, the sake of just talking like i <laughs> teaching them because i don't want anything that's happened to me to happen to you um you know you get a bad review when somebody says well they said they're open and they're not open and then google comes in and wants to close your listing and things like that so it's better just to be honest with yourself and be honest with people and then if you answer the phone earlier if they happen to call you then you look like a hero and if they call you after hours uh and you answer you still look like a hero I lived and I learned on that one. Thank you. And you will be able to come back in here and edit these at any time. I found out very quickly early on in my career that I don't want to get up every Saturday at the crack of dawn. <laughs> Sometimes I want to sleep in until like 11. So I have my business hours, even at unlimited ink set to, um, we don't, I don't, I think it, the first employees had an hour in, so they opens at nine now. And then, uh, we close, we have schedulers open, but we don't want to send notaries out that late. So I think we have it closed at 8 p.m., but we have schedulers on until 10. And we still get people that we can help. But again, we look like a hero because we're uh, past what it says we're open to. All right. We got those hours in there. I'm going to tell you that adding messaging, is, I don't care what anybody else says. I've never seen anybody else's training on these things, but it never worked for me. It is a whole hassle to have an app that you have to log into and answer and it never really makes sense. Just have the customers call you. They're either going to call you for a notarization or they're not. Um, I like synchronous communication, not asynchronous communication. And that's what chat messages is, is asynchronous communication. By the time you might get their message, it, you, you know, just pick up the phone. Even the emails coming out of Google business are a pain. Yeah. Because because if you're driving along, it's a lot easier to pick up the phone mm -hmm. than to try to answer somebody that's emailing you. And a lot of times they don't give you your their phone number that you can just hit it, click it and call them. Um, so, yeah, there's times I've got to pull over and try to answer it. And I was like, please give me your phone number. <laughs> yep. Here's another thing that they ask you. And let me read this to you and understand why I don't turn this on. It says, call history lets you see info about customers who called your business through Google. Customers who call your business from Google search or maps will be connected through a unique forwarding number. This means that if they connect through a forwarding number, you don't have their information. So I like them to call me directly and be on my call history. So I do not turn on this calling feature. I found, I tried it, didn't work for me. Can't get back in touch with the customer if you missed their call. This is a better way to turn it off, okay? Anybody else finds it better, good for you, but this is my class, this is the way I'm teaching it. So <laughs> um, that was a little joke, but all right. Now we've got add a business description. This is really important for you. You get keywords on this, right? We, we type in things that we've done, so. <clears throat> When did you start becoming a Texas Notary Public? 2020.
safety needs to be changed. Child safety. safety. Uh, what was that? Child safety is backwards. It's backwards? Please elaborate, because I, 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 I'm not saying that I am right, but I don't know what you it's mean. Spe it's spelled wrong. It should oh. be. <laughs> yeah. Did I get it right there? Yes. OK, my brain totally missed that. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I'm sure Miss Terry thanks you, too. So I'm going to leave it at that. We can always plug in more information, but for the sake of watching, I'm going to leave. You see where I'm going with the direction of that. You want to use as many keywords as you possibly can. I got you halfway there. You can go back and edit in once we get this listing set up. Now, this is where it says add photos of your business. Okay, Miss Terry, do you have a look company logo? No. All right. Well, this is my favorite part then. We're going to just pop into Canva. And this is where you can quickly make uh, photos for your business. So I'm just going to add one. We can add more later. And I'm going to show you where you can add more information and where all these things that I've taught you will come into play. So we're just going to create a design really quick. I'm going to do it the Instagram post size. Seems to be work with everyone. What are the football colors uh, for Houston? Oh, that might not be a good thing. Um, oh, you don't like? I think it's like red, white, and blue. The Houston Texans. Okay. Or red, white, and blue. Well, let's do it this way. Uh, elements. I think I have this uploaded there, may not. I do not. Okay, I'll still do it this way. Now the Houston Astros are the winning team in Houston, as opposed to the losing Houston Texans all the time. They're well. You can go with that. All this stuff, so. <laughs> That might be better. <laughs> the Astros are orange, blue, orange. yellow, white, yeah. Now you can get a whole lot more creative, uh, I promise you. This is just for the sake of getting an image up there. We can take this down at any time, no problem. So I'm going to download this really quick. I just want to get one started, but I will tell you, um, I've done lots of tests on these where it shows how many people see those photos and it'll start notifying by email how many people saw your photo so it is good to have a photo in there we can add more uh, later i just wanted to get one in there we're going to skip doing google ads at this moment now that is something that you should pay money to learn and google has free classes on google ads outside of this course please take their free courses if you ever intend to do them I have done my best to help you guys and I will help you guys more on Google ads, but it is something that is you can you can save a lot of money uh, that you would spend if you know what they're doing. But it is advanced level things and they don't make it easy and it's constantly changing so we're going to skip doing any Google ads at the moment. Then it wants to know if you want to buy an email address um, from Google to have you know powered by Gmail, you can always look at this later. Right. 
All right. And then it says your edits will be visible once you're verified, but we already verified your listing. Then that's what I was talking about. It's going to throw you out into Google. So we've already done the get verified. So what we're going to do now is we're going to log back in to that account. So I'm going to go back to Google My Business Dashboard under Ronnie, where I did this. And we're going to click refresh. Now you may see unverified for a little, a little bit. I want to find you up. There you are. They've already done the verification. Now we just need to let them do it. We've already called the business. Okay. So we've already done it. Now we're going to start going into your listing and we're going to start combing what's all in here. Okay. So your information on here, we've got your business name. Uh, we say no location deliveries and home service only. We've got all of your areas in here. We've got your business areas in here. Special hours are if you're uh, open on certain holidays and all those things, you can go back in there and add those in. If you want to, you can add a website if you want to. Um, you guys don't do products, okay? You don't have products, you offer services. Products are physical, tangible things that you sell in order to do things. But we have our services listed here. Now, attributes, okay? Um, now I've asked an African-American woman before, do you, do you identify as black owned? And they said, no. Do you identify as black owned? Yes. Okay, um, that will help you because people like to shop and support businesses that they appreciate. Um, identify as women owned. Is that something yes. else? I highly recommend if you're a female to do that. Um, you are not, uh, if you're uncomfortable with this question, that's perfectly fine. I know different strokes for different folks. LBGQ owned or operated? No. no. Okay. Never add something that you, that you, you know, doesn't matter. Now it says crowd. This means do you accept LGBTQ at your business? Yes. I will tell you being a gay man that I actually shop for businesses that advertise this. Um, if you live anywhere like in California, it's really important in West Hollywood, everybody, I mean, the whole, the police have gay flag, gay pride flags on the side of their car, like painted on. So this can help you in certain areas, especially if you live in a, 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 a gay area. Now you do want an appointment required um, because you they can't just walk up to you. So you do want to say appointment required and you don't offer online appointments at this time. So we're just going to apply those to your listing there. And when did you, you said we, it was 2020. What month yes. do you remember? Um, your commission? Yes. Um, March 3rd. March 3rd. So we're letting people know how long you've been in business. Now we already added a photo, but this is where you would go to add more photos. Now we're gonna add in, we'll just choose this logo as your logo for the moment. We'll see if it fits into that square. So we'll set this as a logo. Now. You are able to create a cover and a video here, and this looks really great on your listings as well. I have them set up for hours. Um, you will get more exposure if you have a cover and a video. Um, just for the sake of time today, I'm not going to put that in for you, but I'm going to add you on as an editor so you can come in and edit your listing. Um, so, you'll, Yes, ma'am. I have a question on video. I tried to upload a one-minute video because that's what it was, mm -hmm. um, and it wouldn't let me. Any okay. idea how, you know, if there's a time limit on it? Um, let's actually pop over to this listing here. I'm gonna duplicate this tab one second and let's see what I did for this listing. I mean, granted, I'm a little bit talkative when I do videos. <laughs> it probably shouldn't be. I'm gonna pop into Mr. Richard's listing. And let's see, yes, I think his is up there. 
because I remember on ZigZig, it can only be like 15 seconds, which doesn't give you a chance to even spit out your name. So this is the one that I did for uh, Mr. Richard. Mm -hmm. We'll just check and see how long it is. Who do you trust when you need a document notarized in Dallas, Texas? Let's see. It doesn't tell me how long it is. Okay. Um, I was just curious because um, I'm pretty sure it was Google My Business. Oh, I can double check. But I can I can actually probably find that video. I made it in Canva. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know how to tell. Well, no, it'll be gone by now. Let's see if it just comes up really quick. It's going to be a part of his website images. I'm going to tell you that it's probably around 60 seconds or less. Okay. And it may um, have been the mine was just a little bit long. Because I don't see it popping up right away, but I'm pretty sure it's 60 seconds or less. Okay. Okay, so we're back on Miss Terry's listing here, and uh, so you're going to need to upload a video, which I've taught you guys how to do in Canva, and you can upload a cover. Um, you may need to play with your cover sizing a little bit, and what I tell people when they're creating their uh, their covers in Canva is I use this Facebook logo, but then kept everything kind of zoomed into the center. Uh, you can play around with it. Um, Let's keep going through this. So we have product services website. You don't have a website, uh, but they will allow you to create one. I'm going to actually not publish this, but they will create you a website just based on what they think of it. You can go through and play with that, but I will tell you, it doesn't matter really if you have a website on Google business. It matters if you have a website online. When people click on those Google business listings, it's either I'm going to call this person or I'm not. You're either open and you can give me the service or not. And there's no special, but you can use their uh, free website in order to, to do it. Now, we're not going to connect my domain to it. Uh, Ms. Terry, if you want to do that, you would want to use this Terry Freeman dash notary business site. And yes, you can do some things on it, but it's, it's not going to be as prominent as if you build your own website. And then this is where I'm going to add you as a user. Ms. Terry, what's your email? Um, T signs, S I G N S, Houston. I got you. It already predicted you from my okay. context. So we're going to make you, for right now, I'm going to make you a manager in case you need me to help you on things. And then eventually I'll make you the owner if that's okay. Just it being your first time um, since I did it for you. Uh, I'll make you a manager and then I can convert you over to owner later. That way I can help you, especially since you're one of the students. Um, and yes. you'll need to go in and accept that invitation. Now, with what we did today, it will take uh, a little time for them to, um, to get it verified. Uh, so let's just click on what it says with verify. Now we did the phone verification. Let's just see what happens. Please enter your mailing address. All right, so they may so they may want to do it by card. So let's see if we can speed this up a little bit. Um, I got your. I'm going to put your address in here one more time. They did do it by phone, but for some reason it's still showing undone. So Ever. there we go, and I got it in there. All right, so it actually wants you to do a verification video. So what this means is, and we're not gonna do this on, on camera, but you're gonna actually take a video of the location with your phone, and then they're gonna ask you to uh, verify your actual physical location. And it's one of their new ways of doing things. Um, I checked for other options, but it says you can continue to make edits uh, to your Google business, but they will not be visible until you complete verification. So you'll, it says you'll need a mobile device with a camera. Your video is only used for verification purposes and never show publicly. So we will start there unless you want to do it now while we're in this session.
what um, would I have to do? Um, I, I talked to somebody who had this mm -hmm. happen and actually she had a Google My Business page already set up and they wanted her to re-verify it. She had to go out to her mailbox and like show them the picture of it. She had to show them like the front of her house. And then they said, well, you know, you don't meet people at your house. We want to see your car. And, and I got skeptical at that point because I said, so they wanted to see your license plate even. And she said, I was just trying to make sure that they got my uh, listing back up and running. It sounded very scammy to me and a couple other people. I think we were on Clubhouse. It sounded scammy to everybody that was on there, but apparently it is the way they do it now for some of the uh, home-based businesses. So you have to do it. Yep. That's why I said it's probably best that we don't do this on the actual video and I'll walk you through that. But what you're going to do is you're going to log into this on your mobile device. You're just going to click start and they're going to tell you what you need to do. And it's going to be things like film the outside of your house and it's only between you and them. Uh, but it is to verify that that is an actual that you're an actual person and that you're an actual home based business. Um, and I actually kind of like it. Uh, because I have to tell you, um, I'm going to pause the video and I'll tell you why, because you guys know I, I, I say things that I shouldn't. Um, let's see, pause recording. Okay, so we've decided Ms. Terry is going to do that after the fact, uh, but we've already gotten all of the information entered in into uh, the Google business listing. There's nothing else you can do. There are analytics that you can look at how many people came to my business, but you're either going to be in an area where you get lots of business and you filled out your listing entirely. Or you're going to be in an area where you don't get a lot of business and it's just going to help you a little bit. Um, nothing you can do other than entering and everything that you can is going to get you any more business and that's why we do more than just Google my business. That's why we do our landing pages. That's why we do our videos. That's why we do. Um, everything that we ever learned here in the notary stars marketing class which is a lot that's why we do all of those things because google is only one more component and sure it comes up right on the first page of of google when someone's looking for a notary but you come up with three other notaries people don't always shop google my business sometimes they scroll down past those because they're looking for something specific and that's where our landing pages and all the communication that we do come into play um with that said, I'd love to open it up for questions today about Google Business. Um, and, and, you know, I don't want to know too much about other people's stuff. And I actually don't know who's teaching this $150 course. I just hear about it. But if you've attended one of those $150 courses, did you learn anything different? I mean, it, I can sure that there's things that they can make up and groom, but I've been doing this for years and years. And this is, I mean, other than the evolution of Google My Business, there's nothing more you can do. Miss Susan, you got your hand raised there? You got to unmute. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You had said in, in the beginning that it's better to list yourself by using your name instead of a business name. Why is that? Well, here's the thing. First of all, when you're a notary and you're going out to people's homes, we talked about this during the SBW conference that we had earlier in the week. You are supposed to uh, provide proof that you are a notary public. And if anybody ever wants to verify your credentials, it allows them to be able to look you up and see if you're in good standing with your state, if your state has that functionality. That's the first thing. Second thing is it can be very confusing for, for signers when you have a, a name that um, may not resonate with notary public so when they see terry freeman notary public, oh i'm looking for a notary public but when you have a name like i have a uh and Akea, i love you please don't get me but when you have something like adb docsign that's one thing that comes to mind like she has a google business listing and she does multiple things but i think if i were a consumer and i saw adb docsign i wouldn't resonate with it being what i was looking for because when I typed into the internet, Notary Public, and when I see DocSign Pros, they, they may, or Doc Pros, names like that don't really res, we know what it means because we work in the industry and we think, oh, Doc Pros, it must be a notary. But when it is something that 
doesn't identify with what the customer is looking for. And 90% of the business you're going to get off the internet are people who have only used a notary once in their life. And this may be their first time. So that's why I say just being the notary public on there is best. Because mine is Olivera mobile notary service. Mm -hmm. Is that, should I change that the name of the city that you live in? No, Olivera is my last name. Okay. You know, you are able to, this is the beauty of being in business, right? You get to make executive decisions because you are the business owner. Um, I use unlimited ink notary, but before we evolved into unlimited ink notary, I've got commercials and billboards in Arizona. Okay. Like seriously, like we run commercials and billboards. Um, not too many people haven't heard. I've been on the radio. Like I ran a whole radio thing for the entire year. Not too many people don't know the name i was ronnie mickle notary public before and i used ronnie and it worked very well for me you can choose if your business if you think your business name is going to stand out but i will tell you when you are a business people i found converting over to unlimited ink from ronnie mickle notary public i got more calls from my name and i'll tell you why i think that is I think it's because notary work is kind of personal. And when you're a company, you don't really know who's going to be seeing your information and people felt very connected to a name and a face that they felt like they could trust versus a company that they needed to earn the trust or find out more information about. So that's where I think that dividing line came from. And I, again, a lot of this I teach from my heart and experience, not just because I think it's some way it did work better for me to have my name and common notary public, but, but now I'm not the only one on this team. I used the company name, but I used Ronnie Mickle notary public well before. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions for today? I would love to answer them. And I, I, I understand if there's not a lot of questions because there's not a lot to Google my business. It's, not a complicated program and the reason i wanted to incorporate this is so that we can make this video i'm actually going to put it on our youtube channel um i i'm sorry but you can spend 150 dollars and get a whole year and learn how to build a website and do everything uh, at uh notary source versus you know this this is you know pretty simple and straightforward and if you have a problem with it as one of the marketing students reach out to me because i'll be glad to help you uh, I help a lot of our students on on side projects. Um, I see Miss Terry's hand went up, and then Miss Susan, I'll come back to you again. Okay, so so Ronnie, my next steps are: I did receive the email, and it says you are now a manager of mm-hmm. Terry Freeman, comma Notary Public, and it says I can view my profile. So is that where I would go for my next steps? You say basically take a photo of my house and then upload it. Correct. So you're going to be able to log in and you're going to be able to see everything that I'm seeing. And I just want to make sure you can see that Google listing under the business profile manager. Um, The next step for you is going to be, you're going to see something like this when you log in. Let me get get back to your listing particularly. Oh, I got to switch over to Rodney. Sorry, it toggles back and forth between Notary Stars and Unlimited Ink. So you're going to log in to, you'll see something like this where you click on it. And you're just going to go right there to verify now. Okay. And I would suggest doing that from your phone because you're going to be on your phone when you do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. And then, Miss Susan, uh, you had your hand up next. Okay. I have just two quick questions. So, my commission also includes my middle name. And you said people can look you up and check your credentials. So since my commission is listed with my middle name as well, does that mean I need to put my middle name on my Google Google business profile too? You know, that's a toss up for you. If it's a okay. strict logic that your state offers a, a search for notaries, then yes. Okay. Um, and this is also why when I renewed my commission, I went from Ronnie Lee Mickle Jr. to Ronnie Lee Mickle, and then I thought, let's just go to Ronnie Mickle the last time that I've been Ronnie Mickle. And if I can ever get it down to R Mickle, I'm going to do that too. Um, 
you will okay. get signing your name over the years. But yes, if you want people to be able to verify you, um, you can uh, use your name as it's listed on the commission. Now, if you have a really long name, probably not. Okay. Um, but if you can, I would do it. Okay. And my last question <clears throat> is, I have had the last couple weeks Somebody, I'm assuming they're from India because all of the pictures are of weddings from India and restaurants from India and, and people from India and they're being posted to my page. And I saw them one day and I was like, what is all of this? So I posted a little message that, you know, they, someone was posting pictures to my Google business profile that didn't have anything to, to do with Olivera Mobile Notary and to, you know, I apologize for the confusion. And then I went in and I clicked them and I, on them and um, I reported it as just being, uh, I think it was privacy, something about privacy, um, um, a privacy concern or something like that. So a couple of days later, they took them off, but they're they were back up again and I just got them taken back off again. Is there any way to prevent that? Yeah, you need to change your button? you need to change your password. Um, well, it's not it's not from someone. I don't think it's from someone going into my account. It's because people, customers or people can also post pictures from what I saw actually just today when I was playing around with Google just my Google business profile and customers can also post videos. So I don't know if there's, and I tried to find out, I, I Googled, did some Googling on Google and I couldn't find anything where it told you how you can prevent that. I don't believe that there is. Um, I do know that customers can post things as well. Um, if they're not coming, I would try changing my password just in case. Oh. Okay. All right. It is tied to your Gmail password, um, okay. or at least mine is. Um, you you should change your password, and if that doesn't remedy it, you're going to have to keep reporting them or reach out to their help and support. Uh, but I don't, I don't, and it could be, you know, uh, that they think they're posting. If they're from another country, they may be thinking they're posting on something else. Um, no, but put up like twenty twenty five of them. And it pretty much annihilated most of the ones that were that were on mine because mine showed up at the bottom. Yeah, I would probably say um, I'll change. I'll start with changing the password and report them again. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And then, Mr. Butch, you got your hand raised there. Hey, Ronnie, how you doing? I'm Good. Really, how are you uh, doing, big winner? Yeah, I'm a lucky guy. Thank you. Um, Ronnie, you know, last week we didn't do uh, marketing, but I caught up on the homepage of the website on services and the contact. Um, I think I do need, you know, like a one on one on that contact page, if you could help me with that. And what do you mean, uh, one on one on the contact page? Um, uh, if we could share my screen at some later time and we can, and you can see what I've done on that, on that, on my website. Okay. So uh, it's a contact page on your website. Yes. Are you yes. building your website with Wix? Yes. Okay. I just got it over from lead pages and then there's something else I want to ask you about lead pages, but anyway, go ahead, Ronnie. What were you going to say? Send me an email uh, to facilitate that and I will get back to you to where I can I'll, I'll send you instructions on how to share me your website. Send yeah. me very specifically what you're trying to accomplish or in that email, but also I'll send you back instructions on how to share your website to me from Wix so that yes. I can edit it and then I'll give you a call and we'll go over it. Oh, that'd be great. Okay, I'll send you an email. Awesome. Um, what's the email address, Ronnie? Can you put it in the chat? It's, uh, it's always contact at notarystars.com. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That goes directly to me. Got it. Now, Got it. for anything related to loan signings on that side of the training, help at Notary Stars is what you want to use because it goes to everybody on the team. Um, yeah. so if I'm in a meeting like this for an hour, okay, they're helping you with loan documents. I'm helping you with marketing. But contact at Notary Stars literally only comes to me. Okay. All right. And uh, 
I want to ask you some questions about doing business as I have all my cards as notary trust. That's the name of my business. Mm -hmm. It's incorporated with an S Corp. Uh, and like you said, when somebody answers the phone, you know, I don't want to say notary trust. I want to use my name. So, you know, I just want to talk to you about doing business as. So when on I, my business cards, it says unlimited ink notary. And then it's got, you know, Ronnie Mickle. Uh, okay. And my contact information. And when I answer the phone, anybody that's ever called me direct, I have always answered the phone. This is Ronnie. And okay. because the way I look at it is, is they already know the business that they're calling or they know who they're calling. Um, okay. I've never answered the phone. This is Ronnie at Unlimited Ink Notary. Now, we do have our scheduling team answer. This is, you know, Kenneth with Unlimited Ink Notary and Notary Stars. You are in a recorded line because we have to say those things. Um, yeah. When they call me directly, it's this is Ronnie. I've I answered the phone that way for my mother. and It drives her insane. She's like, I know who you are. You're my son. But I've done it so many times that I just answer the phone. This is Ronnie. And I'll tell you who I got this from. My first boyfriend ever, uh, which I wrote a book about and published. It's hanging on the wall back there. Um, not a good boyfriend. Uh, but I, I'm like Taylor Swift. I'll write a poem or a book about you. But uh, I, I, and I wrote it in that book. I actually said I thought it was the most pompous thing in the world. But he was a realtor. And he would answer the phone every time. It drove me insane. And I won't say his name on camera because I'd change his name for the book, but you know, uh, this is Corey. That wasn't his real name. That's the name in the book. This is Corey. And I thought it was so pompous and things because I was younger back then, but that's how he answered the phone. And he was like, yep, this is Corey. And I asked him one day and he gave me the same thing I just told you guys. He goes, they already know who they're calling. I just need them to know that they got me so we could conversation could start rolling. And so that's the way I've always answered the phone. I don't do this is now when I'm on the phone lines for unlimited ink, it actually pops up and reminds me like when you dialed the unlimited ink, it reminds me to say that we're on a recorded line because we record every phone conversation with all notaries in title and escrow to avoid the Well, you told me this, or you didn't tell me that. So we can go back and say, yes, we did. And here's the recording. Um, we say it's for training and monitoring purposes, but it's actually for our benefit and protection. I got you. Yeah, whatever you do, don't just say hello. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, um, okay. And I'm going to add my name to my card, so. We also Thank have notaries who answer the phone. Um, they act like, like if you get, if you have a business listing out there, you are going to get some spam calls, no doubt. You're going to get people like, can we help you with your toner? Can we help you with all this stuff? And the answer is no, and then block their number. And over time, you will have blocked a lot of them, but there are always new ones coming and they get new numbers. But <clears throat> Beth and I joke a lot, and there are a lot of notaries who answer the phone, and it's like you can hear them like, hello, why are you calling? Don't ever ask somebody why you're calling. Be glad that they called. You know, um, it's, I, I have one of the marketing companies, I'm not kidding you, one of the marketing companies that called um, I did one funny one where I recorded it. I think I played it for you guys where he got really frustrated with me. But I have one of the marketing companies. He was like, if I ever need a notary, I'm going to call him a leading notary. By the time I got through with him, he was like a, a client. Like he was like, if I ever have to give anything notarized, I'm calling you. So you can be nice to people. I wouldn't try to get clients out of marketers, but it did happen that way one time. Um, but the way I answer uh, the phone has always been, this is Ronnie. Okay, guys, um, we are at 1202. I'm going to do a last call for any questions. This video, even though it's part of your marketing course that you pay your hard earned money $24.95 a month for, I am going to let everybody at Notary Stars have a copy of this because I just can't let these high prices, you know, we offer so much for so little. I cannot stand these high prices going out for something that people might just be afraid of or not know how easy it is. Um, there's no magic to Google my business. I wish there was, I would charge money for it, but it is just a blip on the radar for our actual marketing course. And I hope you guys don't mind. I do share things from time to time and it's actually in the contractual agreement that I had reserved the right to do that. But this one is actually gonna save notaries money. And if we can save all those notaries $150 throughout the country or more um, for Google my business, let's do it. You know, we'll do it as a team, we'll do it together. And you know, 
they will have made one less bad marketing decision because I have to tell you, I go back to when I paid for yellow pages, when my first notary week ever, I bought a $1,900 yellow pages and got zero calls. Um, <clears throat> Google My Business is just one blip on a very large radar that you can do. Um, so thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate you for tuning in and I will see you guys on Thursday for general mentorship. That's your day to bring any questions from me from anything that we talked about, even Google business or anything that's your day. Um, and if you need me in between contact at notary stars goes directly to me. Bye everybody. Bye. Thank you.